Hey, what's up DJs? Today I wanna to talk about the three ways to send a signal from a DJ booth to a satellite speaker wirelessly. Let's talk about it. So when you're at an event, there's a couple benefits to having the ability to send a signal from the DJ booth to some kind of speaker without using wires, whether it be a cocktail speaker that might be on a patio outside, uh, maybe there's an extra space in the venue where some of the guests are going to be hanging out, and maybe you want to get some of the sound over there. Maybe it's just an unconventional layout and you kind of need sound in multiple places. And instead of having to run an XLR cable on the ground and have a tripping hazard or run through an entire roll of gaff tape, having the ability to just send that signal wirelessly saves you time, energy, and it's just overall safer. If you actually double up on that and you have a battery powered speaker, which a lot of us do for ceremonies, that makes it even safer because you don't have to plug in that speaker to any kind of power and then you just turn on on the speaker, you plug in whatever you're using to send that signal to that speaker and you're good to go. You don't even have to worry about plugging anything in. It looks clean, it looks professional, and you have that full sound coverage. Now, one of the first ways that I do this, and this is usually my first go-to, I have three different tools or three different ways that I will typically do this, kind of depending on the use case, depending on the venue, how many people. Uh, I've kind of gotten a good idea of what the limitations are for each of these methods, there are some that are better than others. Uh, so I kind of want to walk you through some of that right now. Now, the first tool that I use, if I can, just because it looks cleaner, it's a lot easier to set up, it saves me a lot of time, is going to be the X5 wireless XLR transmitter and receiver. Now, these are marketed as a quick and easy way to have a wireless microphone. So the idea is you take this end, this is the receiver end, you plug this into a mixer or a speaker, and then you take this end and you just plug it into a wired microphone. And then using the 2.4 gigahertz band, which is the same as Wi-Fi, it'll send the signal from the transmitter to the receiver. The thing I love about these is that they're small. Uh, when you're plugging this into a speaker, especially if you have a battery powered speaker, all you do is just plug this into the back of it, turn these on, make sure that they're green and you're good to go. Uh, they do have a little channel selector right there and that is going to sync up the channel so as long as you make sure that they are on the same channel then you're good to go these also actually have a mic and line level switch uh, so if you are using it as a microphone you could switch it to mic if you are using it to send a signal you can switch it to line level now kind of depending on the situation these are really great uh, if the satellite speaker that you are trying to send the signal to has line of sight of the DJ booth but because it is on the 2.4 gigahertz band, if it's any further than that, if there is anything obstructing the vision of that speaker to the DJ booth, I don't often go with these. When you don't have a direct line of sight, you kind of get an unclean signal with these. They can inject some kind of popping noise, interference sound, kind of like if you're making a call on your smartphone through Wi-Fi, and you begin losing that Wi-Fi signal, it can kind of sound a little fuzzy. That's how the audio sounds when these begin to lose signal with each other. So if there's any kind of obstruction in the way, if it's too far away, if it doesn't have direct line of sight, I do not use these. Uh, these are really nice if it does have line of sight because you just bing, bing, you're done. The other way that I will typically do this and this is going to give you the best audio quality however it doesn't look as clean in my opinion and that is using my wireless body pack and this cable here so this is an xlr to t4s the shore body pack connector i think it's t4s i always forget the standard four but it is an xlr that connects directly into my shore body pack and what this allows me to do is send the signal out from my speakers or my mixer or my DJ console into this body pack and send it to my microphone receiver. I switch it to line level, I'll plug everything in, and then I'll just send the signal out from this body pack into that receiver. Now, one thing that I do like about this method 
is that it sounds a lot better. The frequency response just between using this and the receiver for my wireless microphone and using these, you can kind of tell a difference. If you're looking for it, you can tell a difference. If you're not looking for it and you're not even thinking about it, you can't tell a difference. Another thing that I do really like about this, the signal is a lot sturdier because my microphone is running on the 500 megahertz band and because it has half wave antennas, I really don't ever have to worry about whether or not it's going to lose signal because unless I am trying to transmit the signal across an entire football field, my receiver will be able to pick it up. One of the things I don't like about this method though uh, is I don't like necessarily like the way that it looks. Having a speaker on a tripod and having this in the back of it is a lot less noticeable, if you will, than having this a receiver with a speaker, right? Even if I use the tripod tray, if I put the receiver on top, I don't wanna put the receiver on the floor because if it's an area where a lot of people are gonna be, you run the risk of somebody kicking over a really expensive receiver. Uh, so I usually use the tripod tray on the tripod. I'll set the receiver on top of it. Now, one nice thing is that my receiver does have a halo bolt in it, so it is battery powered. Uh, so in that case, I don't have to run power, but if you don't have a halo bolt, you don't have some kind of a battery pack to power a microphone receiver, you do need to plug in the receiver to power. It does take a little bit longer to set up. It isn't too bad though. It really just adds about three minutes to the setup as opposed to this where you could just pop it in. But one of the things I don't like about this method is just the overall battery life. I don't know if it is due to the change of running actual music through these because obviously they aren't meant for that these are meant for speech and somebody speaking through the lapel microphone but anytime i do use these the battery drains so quickly so as an example sometimes what we will do uh is we'll actually set up a remote speaker either on a back patio of the venue where guests are going to be hanging out and even after cocktail hour, after dinner, once we begin dancing, we'll turn that speaker down a little bit, but we will leave it on, sometimes for the entirety of the event. So that way the guests outside can hear what we are playing inside. So if they hear a song that they like, maybe it encourages them to come in. If they hear us make any announcements, they can hear it. When we use these, I can always get a full five, six hour event with these alone. With this, I'm running through about probably two nine volt batteries uh, just to do the same event. Usually within the first hour and a half, two hours, uh, the battery's already at like about 3%. Mind you, I can get about three or four ceremonies off of a single nine volt battery when I'm using this the way that it's intended as a lapel microphone. But as soon as I use it to transmit the audio from my speaker system or my DJ booth, it just drains the battery. The biggest benefit overall to using that system though is just being on that 500 megahertz band. It's a lot more reliable than 2.4 gigahertz because it isn't being used for Wi-Fi or anything along those lines. And the third way, I actually very recently picked these up specifically for this. I did buy these used and I've used them on a few events so far and that is these guys. Uh, so these are the Sennheiser EW500. These are the G2s. They do have, I think, the G3s out now. And I got these used on eBay. They were incredibly inexpensive used. They are pretty expensive brand new. And the thing that I did like about these, uh, the few times that I used them, I do not have nearly as much time in the field with these uh, as I do with either the X Vive or my actual wireless microphone. You can tell it's kind of the same footprint as the X Vive. Uh, and that's actually kind of what attracted me to them. These are actually intended as a wireless microphone solution for videographers. I am hoping to get a little bit more experience with these out in the field. Uh, the few times that I did use them, I like them because of the same reason that I like these. They are easier. They're battery powered. They look cleaner because you can kind of hide it on the speaker. You don't have the tripod tray attached to the tripod that the speaker is on. It just looks cleaner. There have been a few gig logs and I do have one coming up here pretty soon 
that you are actually going to see that we actually sent like, uh, I think three wireless signals um, because the, we were at a barn, the dancing and the cocktail was going to be on a patio behind the barn. The dinner was inside of the barn and there was about 200 people in there. Uh, so we had the X5 that was sending the signal to another speaker inside of the barn as a filler speaker. And then we actually used this to send the signal to the DJ console that was on the back patio. Because the nice thing, especially with this, because I do have the same receiver both inside of my flight case and that I use for my ceremonies, I can actually use this to send a signal to my DJ booth if I am playing music in a different location. Uh, so it's really flexible. Uh, and that's kind of the nice thing. That's actually why I intentionally try to make sure that I'm running the same receiver, both for the ceremony and for the reception. So that way I can kind of switch the microphones in and out if I need to. And that has definitely been pretty beneficial. The three ways that I will typically transmit a wireless signal is either A, with these X5 wireless transmitter receivers, which are great if you have a direct line of sight, but anything beyond that, I don't recommend them for. I do think that these are a very useful tool for any DJ to add to their arsenal, specifically because of the price. They are so inexpensive. 70% of the time I am in an environment where these are perfect. The other 30% or so, not so much. But because of how inexpensive they are, I think that they are incredibly valuable. And I do think that any DJ that has these in their arsenal of tools is gonna find a lot of use for them. And then the second way that I will send the wireless signal is using my wireless lapel body pack with this XLR cable, and then I'll send it to my wireless microphone receiver, the same one that I use for ceremonies and the same one that is built into my Prime 2 flight case. And then the third way is with the Sennheiser EW500 G2s. Uh, they do have the G3s or even the G4s out now, I believe. Uh, but these are really useful, a bit more on the pricey side. Actually, both of the wireless microphone and these are both on the pricey side. But the way I justified the wireless microphone is because I also use that for ceremony. So it's a lot easier of an investment to make as opposed to spending almost $900 or $800 on a way just to transmit a speaker wirelessly. That's it for this video. If you like this type of content, hit that like button, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos, and tell me in the comments section below, what do you use in order to transmit a signal wirelessly to a remote speaker? And if you are interested in growing your DJ business, click the link in the description below to join our Facebook community, DJ Marketing School, where I am doing interviews with different DJs and industry experts and figuring out what works for growing our business. I also have a podcast coming out with those interviews, so keep an eye out for that, as well as a new website, djmarketingschool.com, where all of that content will be collected and stored together. That's it for this video. We'll catch you guys in the next one.